Lower the longboat, Mr. Banks. Lower the longboat. in one of Albert's steamships. I've often thought, fancy a sailor sweating all day down below without even sight of the sea, shoveling coal into a furnace. Fancy a sailor, fancy me. Yes, it's wicked. My brother a ship owner and his wife living in a basement. Every penny James earns is for buying more shares in the company. Let me help you. Oh, you'll sell your frock. Look, you'll do yourself an injury. You can't even live. Oh, that. indeed I can. Much without the cargo. The cargo's worth nothing at all. More salt than sugar in those bags now. Caught in a right squall by the look of her. Didn't even have time to reef the sails. The gumption to try. No one abandons ship unless they have to, sir. Come on, put your backs into it, heave! Got a cargo of our own to get home. Won't stand the keeping too long, neither. What's oh, today? See, won't harm even our cargo pineapples. Should be some good salvage money in this, eh? It's that smoky old range in there. Oh, James will have something to answer for when he gets back. It's just a queasiness that passes soon enough. How's young William? Wanting his dinner, I should think. I must go. The maid has no way with the child at all. You know, James could afford a maid to help you. Servants? You'll be wishing a carriage on us next. Well, at least he could afford a decent house. There's a very passable property, you know, in Trinity Road. It'll but... all come soon enough once James has control of the old Eden line again. And when will that be? It's like Albert's steamship. Men, heads in the clouds. So long as we've got our feet on the ground, there's no harm in that. Well, at least mine aren't stuck in a basement. <laughs> Look, go and give young William his dinner. You'll be all right. I am all right. It's just a touch of sickness that comes over me at times. Sickness? Well, haven't you ever... Oh, no. No, it couldn't be that. It's coming up nicely, Mr. Baines. Right. Shift the rest over to starboard. That's it. All right, now, come on, shift the rest of it over to starboard. I take it there's a set of spare sails aboard. I've never known a ship put to sea so ill-equipped as this one, sir. Well, we'll use what we can from our own sail locker. We'll take her in tow. Oh, Elizabeth, could it really be? Well, you've waited long enough. James would be so pleased. Well, as long as he shows he is. But this is no place to have a baby. He'll have to put his hand in his pocket for you now, Anne. Hmm? Yeah, will he really be pleased? Of course he will. An heir to the only, didn't I? And this rate will not make Liverpool by the end of the month, sir. You'd like us to cut it, wouldn't you, Mr. Bates? The crew didn't think it worth saving, sir. I think she's a fine ship, and in my opinion, a fast one. Salvage awards should be worth a tidy sum. I can't agree, sir. It's not worth the risk we're taking on our cargo of pineapple. It could be rotting below within the week. Hmm. Ireland? Delayed. Ross Carberry sailing tomorrow. James was ever a man of few words. Oh, especially when words cost money. But to put him to Ireland? Well, it must have been serious for James to delay and risk his pineapple cargo. The ship must have been very badly battered. Well, it's seaworthy now where he'd not be sailing tomorrow. Yes, but in what condition? What? The Charlotte Rose is not the ship that she was, and the Irish Sea can be fearsome. <laughs> oh, I, I can't bear it when they sail without me. The worst they can endure at sea is nothing beside the fancies that haunt me at home. Anne, I was expecting you most day. Oh, whatever's the matter with you? 
I'm sorry, Robert, I just keep bursting into tears for no reason at all. You're surprised? It's happened to me often enough. What happened? <laughs> Thank you for bringing the telegram, Robert. I'm sure you've business to attend to. Listen, what are you doing here? I'm just calling. In an apron? I'm giving Anne a hand in the kitchen. You giving someone a hand? I've never known you put yourself out for anybody. Give my love to Sarah. Listen, if there's anything wrong with her in there, we ought to get a doctor. We don't need a doctor yet. Yet? You mean... she's... Anne! Anne! No! Anne! <laughs> Why ever didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted James to be the first to know, Robert. But I think it's wonderful news after all. <laughs> all this time. <laughs> you just wait till I tell Sarah. Oh, Robert! No, no don't worry! She won't bring the word to anyone, I promise you! It'll be all over Liverpool by nightfall. Does it really matter? Not if James were here. You'll have to get used to being on your own from now on, you know. There'll be no more voyages with James when the baby's born. Why ever not? Babies just give them an excuse. For what? To go off, fancy free. Oh, just because Albert's away. Well, as long as James gets you out of this place, that's something. But you'll have to insist. I think not. James himself will insist. <laughs> James, a father! <laughs> what do you say about that, then? <laughs> I was beginning to wonder. Wonder what? Well, you know our James. All that energy and not even a child to show for it. Well, I mean, the, the rest of us have managed it, haven't we? Oh, Rob, really? <laughs> It'll be the making of James, you mark my words, having a family. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's nothing like fatherhood to give a man a proper sense of responsibility. Mm. You don't seem best pleased with the news. Should I be? Another James and Eden on the way. <laughs> but like that, it is a sobering thought. And a worrying one. Worrying? I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, you never can see beyond the end of your own nose, can you? If James has a son, the Oneidin line will go to him and not to our little Samuel. Well, I, I do have 1,500 shares of my own in the company. Well, you'll need a sight more than that if there's to be anything worth having for our little Samuel. Robert, you must buy more Oneidin line shares. Get these hatch covers off! Read for discharge! Where are them dockies? We've got a cargo aboard that won't stay a moment longer. Mr. Baines, what kept you? We took a derelict in tow. Cost us a week old tow. Well, Captain O'Dean thought it was worth it. I can't understand it. Normally, I value his judgment. Get on with it there. Well, this derelict, what's her name? It was a Dago schooner, the uh, Maria de Gloria. A Portuguese or Brazilian, anyway. We put what sail we could on her and took her in tow. But the wind changed to the east, so we could make no headway. So we dropped her off at Ross A good prize, is she? Well, Baines doesn't think so, but he's wrong. That schooner's worth a lot to her owner, so the salvage aboard should be a good and hey. James. And the money will go towards buying more ships and the steamship company. Yes, James. Bring us that much nearer to getting control of the Anita line again. Eh? James. Of course, I do regret the delay. I'm having I'm a baby. Sure then, on the other hand... What did you say? I'm with child. Why didn't you say so? I've been trying to, but you didn't give me room to get a word in edgeways. You sure? I wasn't at first. I couldn't believe it. But I'm sure now. James, is it good news? Good news? Oh, that's wonderful news. Most wonderful news I've ever heard in all my life. What's that, then? Here, Robert. I'm going to be a father. Oh, yes, that. Yeah. Anne told me. <laughs> it is certainly most wonderful news. <laughs> you want it to be? Well, January or February, maybe. Oh, yes. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this calls for a toast. <laughs> Sarah, I'm going to be a father. I know, Robert told me. Oh, oh I am. Please be you well. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, go and get Baines. I want everybody to drink to the area of the Oneida line. Oh, and Mr. Baines is chasing up the doctors to unload your cargo of pineapple. Oh, well, better not interrupt that, then. No. He can drink his later, then. Uh, you'll need a decent home now you're starting a family. Oh, my son will lack for nothing. I believe it's a girl. Oh, no. It'll be a boy. Well, here's to James II and to the company that will one day be his.
There's a very nice house in Trinity Road for sale. Of course, it will have to be furnished and with a baby to bring up. Anne will need servants. I'm well aware of Anne's needs. One would hardly think so from a glance around this place. Elizabeth, I'll trouble you to leave it to mind your own affairs, will you? If Anne has to have her baby here... James has already put aside money for a house, Elizabeth. The cargo of pineapple made a handsome profit. I thought a lot of it went bad. Only £50 worth. We made £500 profit on the rest, and with what we'll get from Salving the Maria de Gloria, Anne will lack for none of the comforts that you so kindly wish for her. Oh, dear. No, no, Anne. Elizabeth will attend to it. She is just leaving. James, in there. Brother Robert, what on earth does he want now? Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Elizabeth. You may regards to Albert. When I see him... Your father will be here next. <laughs> He'll be happy to toast our son's health from now until Christmas. James. Uh, that ship you salvaged, yes. she's up for auction. What? The Maria de Gloria. It's in the Shipping Gazette, look. To be sold at public auction at the Wexford Arms, Ross Carberry, where you left it. A month's time. Yeah, barely time for anyone to go and have a look at it, much less decide if he's a use for it. Oh, she'll not fetch more than three or four hundred. Oh, and this must have lost his wits. The owner abandoned interest in it when it was lost four months ago. It belongs to the insurers now, and they seem to want it off their hands just as soon as they can. Don't they know a fast ship on the same one? Oh, don't fret, James. It's their loss. Oh, and ours. Indeed it is. The salvage court will allow only one third of the value. So whatever it fetches at public auction, even in Ireland, will be deemed the value. Oh, but it's, it's really worth so much more. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yes, mm. only James thinks that. Well, Maria de Gloria, you know, so far I've not met anybody who's ever heard of her. Nor have I. It seems she'd never been seen in English waters. Mm. And according to the shipping movement lists, well, there's no mention of her there anywhere. Something odd about that ship. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Robert, we'll go over tonight on a stink packet, eh? To Ireland? Ah, we could be in Roscabry the day after tomorrow. Oh, cut your losses, James. And you'll be all right, eh, if Robert and myself go over to Ireland. Oh, indeed I will. I'm coming with you. And a woman in your condition doesn't travel over the Irish Sea in a steam packet. The Irish Sea is a sight less dangerous than climbing those stairs every time I want to go out, or looking coals from the cellar for that abominable stove. Oh, you never made complaint before. Oh, I've never been with child before. Where's Robert? I've got no stomach for the sea at all. Poor Robert. You and I are used to it. I just heard who's handling the sale of the schooner. It's, uh, Mr. Sankey. A sharp customer. That's all. Here. How much longer must we endure this bouncing tin kettle? Long enough for you to acquire your sea legs. Hmm. And? I just lost my balance. You're ill. I'm not feeling too well. You'll never see sick. It's a baby. You should have stayed at home. I told you. I'm all right, really, I am. on the water. A lot of damage. Day's work for a competent ship's carpenter, no more. Come on. Let's have a word with Mr. Sankey. Uh, Mr. Sankey. Who are you? Oh, my name's Oneida. It was I that salvaged the Maria de Gloria. I'm aware of that. No, I fear there won't be much in this for you, Mr. Needed. Oh, indeed. Well, now, there. this is my wife, Anne, and my brother, Robert. Shall say this? Oh. Looks a good ship to me, eh? She has a bad record. We haven't seen any records at all. What's she been used for? Oh, I'm just the insurer's agent. My instructions are to arrange a quick sale and dispose of her. Mm -hmm. but why did the owners abandon her, eh? They couldn't even ride out a gale. Bad seamanship. Perhaps. Some Dago crew from Brazil, eh? Oh, I know nothing of the crew, except that they were all picked up and taken home to Rio. Mm. Mr. Zanke. What do you think she'll fetch, sir? My principals would be very happy to receive 500 pounds. Eh? I did warn you there was little for you in it as salver. I reckon she's worth four times that amount. But how can you be so sure, James? She doesn't look worth 500 to me. Face the facts, man. You were wrong to price her so highly. I think not, Robert. Look, it's a matter of simple shopkeeping. Oh, sure it is to you. Look, if I price a candle at one penny, 
then a penny is what it's worth. Otherwise, I'd charge more. Mr Sankey doesn't even want to get more than £500 for her. No one will bid more anyway. Right. He's got some interest in this, I swear. I mean, to sell a ship like that, here, in this crowd. James! Yes? £50 worth of pineapple rotted on the Charlotte Roads because of the delay. Can you honestly say you're not just trying to justify that? You saw it, Timbers. Not more than two years old. Lovely lines, you said. But, James, you've said yourself you've no way of telling how fast a ship is until you take it to sea. Ah, well, this time it's different. I just know she's a fast ship. Oh, it's late. Come to bed. I mean, why would they want to get rid of her so quickly? And for such a measly sum? There's more to life than ships. I wanted you to stay at home, but no, you would come over here making yourself ill, and now that you are here... Oh, I'm sorry, I was foolish. It's Elizabeth. She thinks Albert neglects her. Neglects her? Fine house, carriages, servants. Everything she needs, so he's no need to feel guilty about not being there himself. She thinks you'd be the same. For a moment, when you wanted me to stay behind, I... Oh, I admit I was foolish, James. James, where are you going? James! Who's there? Mr. Anita. Mr. Sankey, yeah. I'm just looking around, you know. At this time of night? Well, I couldn't sleep, you know. What can you see in the dark? Mm, all that I want, I think. Well, um, good night, Mr. Sankey. I could bring you before a magistrate for this. This is not your property, Mr. Anita. <laughs> I'm of no wish it to be, either. <laughs> so you went aboard her last night, then? I and found out what I wanted to know. No. Oh. And what was that? Maria de Gloria's a slaver. A slaver? <laughs> I found the fittings for the manacles. And she had a tween deck at one time or other, too. The slave trade's illegal now. Ah, oh, well, it still goes on. How? I thought the French and English navies had ships on the African coast to stop it. So you need a fast ship to evade them. A ship especially built for the purpose. Though Brazilians have got too much in slavery to give up the trade altogether. So that schooner was especially designed to put a long wait between her and any ship pursuing her. No wonder you couldn't find out out about her, Robert. I doubt she's ever been registered. But what's she doing in northern latitudes? Well, maybe there was after her Brazilian owners. And he wants to get rid of her, eh? So he takes on a cargo of sugar, and with the same crew, he sends her on a commercial voyage through seas they, they've never sailed before. And at the first sign of trouble, they take to the boat. So that explains why the insurers want a quick sail. The less attention drawn to the better. <laughs> uh, suits my purpose fine. But you want the ship to get the real value so that you'll get a just salvage award. And the salvage award. Huh? I'd rather have the ship. What? For 500 pounds, she'd be an absolute bargain. On the fruit run from the Azores, she beat everybody home. Now, I'll tell you something. When we get back to Liverpool, we display no more interest in the Maria de Gloria. We tell nobody. But I thought the £500 was for a house. Oh, and we can always get a house. 
But we'll never have a chance of a schooner like that. Not for 500 pounds. It's a poor lookout for a man of my years if he's to be denied the occasion to drink a health to his old grandson. It'll be six months at least before he's even born. And the way you're drinking his health, you'll not be here for the christening. Well, I understand at least he's to be born in a more salubrious surrounding than this. Yes, James is to buy a house for us. The property I'm told you have in mind seems sound enough in her timbers. A bit short on accommodation. If it's the house in Trinity Road that you're referring to, I've been to look at it, that's all. I'm not sure I'm completely taken with it. In any case, at the moment, James needs the money for other purposes. But it only takes one other bidder to find out about that ship, and the price will soon soar to its proper value. Well, I'll just have to chance that, won't I? Five hundred pounds is as far as I can go. Huh. So Anne must do without the house in Trinity Road. Oh, if anybody talks to me about that again... Look, we're Sarah. only trying to help James. Help? Well, yes, I mean... That is, I, I mean... James. We do have something saved. And with that little nest egg for my Aunt Maud... Are you we... offering me a loan? Okay. Well, not exactly. No, we thought if we could buy, say, say 500 of your Aneedon Line shares, well, then they'd still be in family. Oh, now, if you, you want to buy some more shares, you buy them from the public. That way we'll have all the more in the family, won't we? Unless, of course, you want to reduce my holding. Right? Robert, I might have to sell some shares. But if I do, I'll sell them to people I know I can buy them back from. If James O'Neill found out she was a slaver? I can't say, but I strongly suspect that he has. Well, if he has, he'll bid for her. Oh, good morning, Emma. <laughs> Miss Emma Callan, may I present Mr. Sankey, agent for Weatherbiz, who insured the Maria de Gloria. I'll take my leave. Oh, there's no need. You can speak freely in front of Miss Callan. She owns the business. Indeed. She also has a head for it. Very pretty one, too, if I may say so. Oh, uh... Mr. Sankey thinks that James O'Neill may have stumbled on the truth about the Maria de Gloria. And that she's a slaver? Well, a fast ship, anyway. A ship he might be inclined to purchase if he could get it cheap enough. Well, Wilbraham, at least, will bid against him. Mm, so will I. Because if James O'Neill is at that auction, I'll be there, too. And if that's the case, there's no question of this private sale we've been discussing. A private sale? Well, Mr. Sankey remembers our interest in the Maria de Gloria when her owners wanted to dispose of her quickly six months ago. And now she's turned up again. <laughs> Brought in by, of all people, James O'Neill. Mr. Sankey's offering her to us for a straight £2,500. Well, then why go to the trouble of putting her up for auction? To save Mr. Sankey's principles from paying James O'Neill in the salvage money he expects. Oh. Well, if we don't let anyone know what a fast ship she is, ma'am, no one will bother to go all the way to Ireland to bid for her. The most of the locals will go to is about £400. And uh, Mr. Sankey's man, what's his name? Wilbraham. Aye, Wilbraham has instructions to top that. You'll get it for 450 at the most. Of which James O'Neill gets one third as salvage. A mere £150. Aye. And then your Mr. Wilbraham, acting for you, sells the schooner to us. On the quiet, for £2,500. What would she be worth if you auctioned her fairly? Well, at the least, 3000 She's as good as that. Yeah, she's remarkable, ma'am. Uh, which is why my Mr. Sankey knows we'll be glad to have her. Well, you can bid at the auction if you prefer, Mr. Fogarty. But remember my way. You gain a considerable bargain. We save ourselves a great sum by preventing O'Neill from getting the full salvage due. From what I hear, that in itself could be quite a consideration with you, Mr. Fogarty. Yes, but if James O'Neill is going to bid for the ship himself... Well, in that case, our transaction can't stand. So it's imperative that we find out. James says she'd beat everything on the sea from the Azores. A fine time to buy a ship. Oh, the right time if it's a bargain. Ah, Elizabeth. Oh, quite the stay at home these days, aren't you, James? That's nice to be with your wife at a time like this. Is dinner ready yet? It will be soon if the fire's not gone up. Anne says you're not going to buy that house in Trinity Road after all. Elizabeth. Don't you before. Keep out of our affairs. You mean to leave her here, don't you? Your profits and your ships come first, even before your own child. Anne is as anxious as I am that our child shall make no difference to our way of life. She readily understands that if I need to put the affairs of the Aneedon line before a bow-fronted window or a lace-covered cot, then I have every right to do so. Well, am I not right, Anne? Of course, James. I must go. Hmm. I left the servants spring cleaning, and with Albert away, they're inclined to grow lax in their duties. How lucky you are, Anne, not to be troubled with these problems. Next time my sister comes to call, I advise you to be a bit more reticent with your confidences, eh? Could you put some more coal on the fire for me? I've managed to fill the bucket, but it's a little bit I find hard. Anne, if it should be necessary to find more than £500, uh, would you begrudge me the expenditure? Well, how could you raise the money? I'll sell some of the shares. In that piece, couldn't you sell a few more and we could have a house as well? A year before the Maria de Gloria made enough profit to buy back the shares. And a house couldn't make any profit to buy them back. So, yeah. You would be grudging me, eh? I can manage the stairs without undue exertion at the moment, but not the coal. I 
I'm not incommoding you. Oh, an unexpected honour, Miss Callan. Well, I'd heard your wife was with child, and knowing there'll be times when you're away at sea, I wanted her to know if there was ever anything I could do. My wife has everything she needs. I came out of kindness, not charity. Oh, won't you sit down, Miss Callan? I'm afraid you find us ill-prepared for visitors. Miss Clay, make no ceremony for me, Mrs. Anita. You'll take a glass of something? We have some Madeira. No, well, uh, I can see you're just about to dine. I'll call another Oh, you think nobody'd ever had a baby before? Well, your wife has never had one before. Well, it's not expected for another six months yet, at least. Well, let's hope you're home for the happy event. And that by then your fortunes would have turned sufficiently to provide for it. Miss Callan, why have you called her? I admit that whilst here I did intend to make inquiries about something else. But my concern for your wife is no less genuine for that. This ship you salvaged. Well, Mr. Fogarty and I were wondering whether it was worth going over to Ireland to bid for her. Well, would I tell you if it were? Well, you would, I think, if you knew, in fact, it were not. Hmm. What if I were to tell you that the Maria de Gloria is so unstable that she'd found her after hitting the first gale, that she's so unseaworthy that I should have let her to sink? What would you infer from that, eh? That I wanted you out of the way so I could get her cheaply myself? Very possibly. Well, my uncle may have underrated you, but I do not. Hmm. Well, whoever buys the Maria de Gloria buys a pig and a poke. For 500 pounds, she could be worth it, or she could not. For the Callan Company, it's not much of a risk. But, um... For my wife and myself, expecting our first, uh, well, we've got better things to spend our money on. Well, I appreciate your candour. Good day, Mrs. Anedic. I'll uh, see myself out. Hmm. Good day. Nice no, guy. Here. That should kill any interest in her there, eh? Now, unless anybody else has heard of that ship, she's as good as ours. Oh, James, stop it. Hey, stop what? Well, it all seems so petty. That ship could be the way back for us. Another ship, another gamble. Oh, I'm sorry, I just feel so weary. I'll get you dinner. I fear it'll be overdone. I see you sailing today, Mr. Baines. Hi, Mr. Bogarty. O'Neidin's in command. Aye. His wife's with him now, saying goodbye. We sail on the tide. So we won't be on hand to see what he might get for salvaging that schooner. The auction's tomorrow. He's not expecting much from that. Got his fingers burnt there, didn't he? Why don't you buy her, sir? You can afford a few thousand. A few thousand? Well, she's not worth more than three or four hundred, from what I'm told. Captain O'Neill never wants to hear of the Maria de Gloria again. I'm not surprised, Mr. Baines. Well, why are you sailing today? Oh, an idle ship costs money. We'll load it sooner than I counted on, so why wait? So that you can go to Ireland to buy that schooner. Oh, you say that? Yes. James, you've hardly spoken a word to me these last two days. Can't you see I'm trying to make amends? I want you to buy her. Another venture, another gamble. Oh, I was just feeling so weary that day. Frightened. I was even a bit envious, too. And a Callan in her fine clothes and Elizabeth. <sighs> Look, I don't care a jot for a house. If buying the Maria de Gloria is what we need, well, that auction's tomorrow. You must be there, whatever it costs. Come in. Excuse me, sir. Oh, yeah. I just thought you'd like to know I fooled Mr. Fogarty all the way. He thinks I'm sane. I neglected to tell him I got my master's certificate back. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Baines. Thank you, ma'am. I told him you'd no wish to hear of the Maria de Gloria again. So if you go now, you just have time to catch the packet. Right. Yeah, only your Fogarty doesn't sell as well. You would only bother with that if he thought you were, too, sir. You'll have it all to yourself. Let's hope it's worth what you pay for it. I'll be back in a couple of days, eh? With the school. So he was going anyway. I should have guessed. <laughs> well, you know kept no need, ma'am. Yes. But for a while, I forgot. But what about her finer points, Mr. Sankey? How do I recommend her to the buyers? Just say she's a 300-ton schooner in need of repairs. A powerful, fine schooner in good state of repair. That is not what I said, Mr. Delaney. A broad beam, sits well on the water, good, strong hind quarters of solid... She is a ship, not a prize bull. Maybe, but I'm a deal more skilled at selling cattle than ships. And there's uh, with something to attract their imagination, as it were. Ah, the Dublin coach. Let's hope it brings some customers. Nobody from these parts has money to spare. I should have thought she was just what was needed for the local potato trade. There's a small bunch of farmers who form themselves into a sort of a syndicate. And if they haven't drunk the money away before the auction tomorrow, they maybe bid a few hundred. But if you want her to fetch a, a fair price... We just want her disposed of, Mr Delaney. Ah, here's someone with the right smell of affluence about him. His name's Wilbraham. You'll find tomorrow he could well be your man. And with the gentleman upstairs as well, I was forgetting what him. gentleman upstairs? 
This was hardly necessary. Just here to observe, Mr. Sankey, to keep an eye on my interest in the matter. Good evening, Fogarty. Good evening, Mr. O'Neillin. James has taken all the money he could raise to Ireland with him. I don't know why you put up with it, Anne. Why, I have a question, did I want to know? I married him for security, and I love him for the lack of it. <laughs> Dear Elizabeth, you wouldn't understand at all. Three hundred pounds I am bid do I hear for. Four hundred for this fine schooner. Now, gentlemen, this auction is conducted by inch of candle. When the candle burns out, the lot falls to whatever bid I've accepted at that time. Now, take heed from my experience as an auctioneer. In the hope of getting it cheap, you stand to lose it altogether if you leave it to the last moment. So who will bid me four hundred pounds? Three hundred and fifty. Three hundred and twenty. If your friend oh, Wilburn doesn't put the price up soon, O'Neill will get it for a mere four hundred pounds. He, I know, isn't going to raise his hand until that candle's near burnt out. Just in time for Wilbraham to make another bid. You can't count on that. Oh, Wilbraham knows these auctions by inch of candle. He can time them for a fraction of a second. So keep calm, Mr. Fogarty. Wilbraham will get that schooner for four hundred and fifty, and our transaction can take place as planned. But if O'Neill should get him first, I'll not risk it. Wait a moment, Justin. Ah, come on now, gentlemen. Surely we could do better than this. Oh. Elizabeth, wait. Less than half an inch of candle left, and I'm still only bid three hundred and fifty pounds. Do I hear four hundred pounds, Mister Wilbraham? Ah, thank you, sir. Now, who will bid me uh, four hundred and fifty pounds? Yes, sir, Mister O'Reardon. Five hundred pounds. Thank you, Mister Wilbraham. Five hundred and fifty pounds. With Mister O'Reardon at five hundred and fifty pounds. Ah, six hundred I'm bid. Wilbraham's limit. If he goes any higher, we've nothing to gain by selling to you afterwards. But if I need him, she'll get it now. Six hundred and fifty, I am bid. That's your Irishman, the potato merchants. Well, at least let's see the colour of Oneidin's money. Seven hundred. I look for seven hundred. Who will bid me seven hundred pounds? Seven hundred, Mr. Wilbraham. Can you help me, Mr. O'Reardon? Seven hundred and fifty, I am bid. Mr. Wilbraham. Eight hundred, Mr. Wilbraham. Now, who will bid me eight hundred pounds? I am bid seven hundred. He's still in at eight hundred. Just how much higher can he now, go? Now, gentlemen, there's only a minute or two. Time we found out. And I must have eight hundred pounds. Yes, sir. I have eight hundred pounds, and the gentleman's just joined us, Mister Fogarty. Eight hundred and fifty. Thank you, Mister O'Reilly. Nine hundred. Ah, that's better. Nine hundred pounds. I am bid nine hundred and fifty. A thousand. Do I hear a thousand pounds? Well, who will bid me a thousand pounds? With Mr. O'Reardon there at nine hundred and fifty pounds, do I hear a thousand? A thousand. Thank you, sir. Now, gentlemen, time is running out. Can we say ah uh, twelve hundred pounds? Eleven hundred, then. Who will give me eleven hundred pounds? With Mr. Fogarty at one thousand pounds, do I hear eleven hundred? Ah, eleven hundred. Come, gentlemen. Jim. Do I hear eleven hundred? Eleven hundred. Am I bid eleven hundred pounds? You are. You're leaving it late, sir. Well, get on with it then. Twelve hundred. Ah, twelve hundred. I am bid twelve hundred and fifty. Thirteen hundred, Mr. Fogarty. Thank you, sir. Fourteen hundred. Yes, sir. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. I must have more than this, gentlemen. Can I hear nineteen hundred pounds? Will you give me nineteen hundred pounds? Two thousand. Two thousand two hundred. Two thousand four hundred. With Mister O'Neidan at two thousand four hundred pounds, will you give me two thousand six hundred pounds? Can I say two thousand eight hundred pounds, Mister O'Neidan? Do I hear two thousand eight hundred pounds? With Mr. Fogarty at two thousand six hundred pounds, do I hear two thousand eight hundred? You hear two thousand eight hundred. Two thousand eight hundred. I'm bid three thousand. Two thousand nine hundred. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty. Sold to Captain Anine for two thousand eight hundred pounds.
I hope you've got the money, Mr. O'Neill. <laughs> you made a deal with Sadgate, didn't you? Auctioned her off cheaply, took me out of my salvage award, and buy her for the Callan Company. But you didn't know my limit, did you, O'Neill? Well, you've got yourself a fine ship. For the salvage award, which means the schooner's cost me under £2,000. And you have but £500. You'll have to sell nearly £1,500 worth of your shares. Ah, but she's a fine schooner. So, sure. but on the other back, run, she'll make more than. What's happened? Ah. Where's Sam? In bed, ill. She was lifting the coal for that snow, and no one else here at the time. child. She hasn't lost. Yes, but what matter? James has gained another ship. Did you get the schooner? Yeah. Good. That's what we need. you come this way? Very fine. James keeps his promises anyway. A high price to pay for a new house? A lost baby? Oh, I do not think so. Oh, do try to be civil, Albert. I am your wife. You haven't been a wife for me in years. You're never at home, are you? You refuse to follow me. And you had scant need for a wife in Turkey, by all accounts. If you had the smallest regard for wifely duties, you'd have... Oh, it's duty now, is it? Was it ever love? Would you come in here, please? There they are. Albert. Elizabeth. Uh, but, uh, Surprise, eh? Happy anniversary. Of your wedding, man. It was Anne's idea to warm her new house. Uh, how lovely. And everybody here. Uh, uh, William's not so little now. My husband insisted that he went away to school. It's harder nowadays to find good servants than it was to find our new house. My husband, who is the um, member of parliament for Liverpool, you know, is always ready to say, I'm an I. My congratulations, Mr. O'Neill. Mm. Upon what? Oh, upon a fine house, servants, a new prosperity. Since you beat me to the Maria de Gloria, you're a man to be reckoned with again. Never doubt it. Both your ships working? Aye, and another one under charter. The Lady Lazenby. Ah, which reminds me, if you'll excuse me, Fogarty. Thanks. Thank you. House full of gentry, Sarah. Hmm? The cream of Liverpool society, Robert. Anna's as good as any of them. <laughs> well, has it put you in a mood, Emma? For what? For naming the date of our wedding. Husbands and wives. I doubt their social faces. Away on another voyage? Nah, uh, to America. <laughs> With that? No, not this time. So, if you'll forgive me if I slip off in a moment, Anne will be here to look after All right. interests. So will Fogarty. Very good You look extremely well, Elizabeth. Well, well, thank you, sir. And a reception in your honour. So it seems. <laughs> <laughs> you must what, Mr. Needle? Must ask to be excused out here, Lady Lady. What? In the middle of your own reception? Well, time and tide, you know. Oh, nonsense. I will not believe but that you have bought time and tide in Liverpool, along with so much else. Ah, well, if they were for sale. Well, are they not? Did you not assure my husband when you sold him so many of your shares that the Oneidian steamships would make you independent of them? I sold those shares to your husband to buy the Maria de Gloria and this house on the understanding that I could buy them back. Ah, well, I see. So now you're off to America to make your fortune. And on your husband's business. Uh, and returning with uh, winter wheat and molasses. Oh, you make a sound like tradesmen, Mr. Oh, Oneidian. But fine tradesmen, though, Lady Lason. Royal set. Good. Anchors lashed properly. Aye, sir. Lovely ship, sir. Aye, they're all lovely before a wind like this, Mr. Baines. Wish the lady laid to be with mine, instead of on charter. Aye, sir. Isn't she sweeter than her name's sake? Elizabeth, I will not tolerate this. Even at Anne's reception, you and Fogarty. Flirting and smiling, billing and cooing. 
You think no one sees these things? I think the servants will hear you if you do not moderate your tone. Well, they can only gossip, too. Does it give you pleasure that people smirk and talk about us in public? People will talk, with or without cause. They have cause. Not from me. Cause enough. If they say you're no wife to me, they're right. I don't know what you mean. I am tired of being reasonable and patient with you. I've waited and I've hoped. Hoped that by being kind and considerate would at least come to respect me out of simple justice. We can't pretend we've had a loving marriage, but how can it improve when you treat me like a guest in your house that faintly bores you? You can't forget William or forgive me. William is my son, who his father was became immaterial a long time since. But you have cheated me of so very much. You are cold and unfair. It's not I who am cold. Am I? Perhaps you are just not as warm-blooded as some. Warm-blooded? Yes. Married to you? Not as manly. Albert, you don't know how pleased I'm to see you. You know, I was afraid that you... No. Well, truth to tell, I was ashamed. I just didn't know who else to turn to. It was kind of you, paying those bills. Oh, well, uh, that's all right. Only the show closed. Well, it, it's not a busy time in the theatre just now. I've not worked since. It's very hard for a woman alone. Uh, Carrie, you're, you're all right now. Well, I'm fine. Uh, I mean, um... Money for food and rent, you... Oh, I'll manage. No, 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 no. Well, take it if you need it, please. Oh, you darling man. Oh, I, uh... Thank you, Maggie. Anne, may I stay here with you for a few days? At least until I find myself some other lodgings. What has happened? I've left Albert. Is it not late for a respectable matron to be abroad? Well, it's late for me anyway. Come on, Sarah, it's time we were going. Just a moment. Sarah. Just a moment, Robert. I want to know what brings Elizabeth oh, here. Do you know? Well, with all our talk, we quite forgot the main purpose of your visit. Oh, so we did. Those papers upon which James requires our signatures. Upon well, which I require your signatures. Oh, ah, yes. You see, we have a legitimate reason for our gallivanting. But what brings Elizabeth here? Oh, I beg pardon, ma'am. Now it's Mr. Fraser. I see. Albert. I'd expect it better of you, at least. It is not the way you think. But you'll aid in a better in a latest foolishness. We are not alone, Albert. No, I can quite see that. Look, I don't pretend to understand what's going on, but uh, this is no time to, for, for our family sake. What do you and Needings know of family? You harbour my wife, connive at a meeting with do his man and... Do you intend your tone of manner to be so offensive? Do you deny you were sitting here discussing it? <laughs> Laughing and talking with a spoiled girl <laughs> with no better sense of loyalty than to desert me out of fear? you? I do deny it, yes. I followed you tonight. You were ever a trollop, and now you're a spy. I've advised your wife before this to stay with you. Oh. I owe me marriage to your whim, do I? Well, your marriage is none of my business. Oh, yes, it is. It's very much your business. If my wife deserts me, I'll not maintain her. 
She'll get not one penny from me. You need your money, do you, to support mistresses? You'll need money to get it from the man you left me for. Oh, yes. now, listen, stop, it. On. stop it, all of you. I will not have such behaviour in my house. Robert, Sarah and Mr Fogarty were here by purest chance. And any other suggestions are direct affront to me. I can't believe that. Very well. Robert, please see that he leaves this house. If James... No, I, if, 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 but he isn't. Oh, all right, I know. Albert, I think you should leave. Oh, I shall go. And when... Elizabeth, it's my opinion that you should go with your husband. Go? I shall not. I'd rather walk the streets. You may yet be doing that. Love it. Yes, sir. This isn't your first trip, is it? No, sir. I've got two trips to Sherbrooke, sir. So you're the trim the lamps this morning. Thanks, sir. What about this one, eh? Thoughts of New York taking your minds off your work? Been smoking. What if it should start a fire? <laughs> well, re trim it. Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Sorry, sir. Mrs. Fraser has left her husband. Hi. Oh, you knew that? <coughs> I feared it may end in the law courts. Law courts? And divorce, you mean? <sighs> or separation. Oh, it's unthinkable. It would ruin the Anedians, and Captain Aneden would never permit it to come to that. Well, he's at sea, isn't he? I'm also told that Robert and Sarah were party to her walking out, and aided and abetted it. And even that she may have left him for... Go on. For you. I see. So there is no substance to it? <laughs> None. Well, I'm glad of that. For I cannot afford scandal of any kind in my situation. Nor even less could you. Me? Eh? Scandal would prevent us being wed. Truth to tell, I cannot feel a great deal of sympathy for you, Elizabeth. You've behaved shabbily, in my opinion. You foisted upon Albert a child who was not his own, yet he's come to love young William. He's had to suffer selfishness and willfulness from you. And yet he still has some regard for you. Well, if you feel like that, perhaps I'd better not stay here. No? Where will you go? If I have been shabby to deceive Albert, though it was before my marriage, the man with whom it happened must yet do his duty by me. He wanted to do his duty, as you call it, at the time, and you rejected him. Now, if you could any girlish dream that Mr Fogarty can somehow rescue you, you're sadly mistaken. Anything he did would ruin both of you. I don't see why people do get divorced nowadays. As a last resort, to rid themselves an impossibly wicked or immoral partner. I think I should tell you, as soon as you came here, I wrote straight away to James. The news should reach him in New York. You had no right. This is my life. James won't stand by and see you ruin it. James is very far away. Not to be disturbed. I am so sorry to have been so long with that gentleman. Of course, Mr. Fellows. But uh, you would not have enjoyed meeting him. Uh, I am afraid they are not gentlemen in his kind of work. What did he discover? Not happy news, I'm afraid. It only goes to show how wise you were to take legal advice as early as you did in this. But what news? Ah, your husband is not being wise. It's beginning to build into a solid case for judicial separation. Well, you understand that's not truly what I want. I only want my husband to maintain me. No, I said not one penny till she comes home and I stand by it. But you're not living at home, Albert. You're living here. The servants have left and I'm not going to live in an empty house. So? Albert, I came to you quite reasonably. Let Elizabeth come. She deserted me. With provocation, Albert, with provocation. With less provocation than I've had in years of marriage. I'm not prepared to discuss my affairs with you. Affairs? Then you must discuss them with someone. Must? Oh, I think not. Here we are, then. I thought you might care for a glass of wine. We just got a bottle in. Thank you. I'll put it there. Uh, nothing else? Well, just call Albert. You seem uh, quite comfortable here. <laughs> well looked after by uh, Miss Harris. I don't recall making introductions. This won't do, Albert. It's affecting the business, you know. And there's Fogarty daily growing more impatient for plans for your steamship. Contracts are going elsewhere. Trade's falling off. 
Scandal never was good for business, Albert. It must be stopped. You stop it, then. I'm a... Look, Albert, you and Elizabeth must, I don't know, make up, come back together. I don't, anything but regularise this situation. Elizabeth sent you to say this? No. No, no, no. Sarah and I thought that... Well, yes, Elizabeth knew that I was coming here. Yes. And the remedy's in her own hands. Is it? Look, I don't pretend that Elizabeth is an easy person to live with, but there's fault on your side too, you know. Well, for heaven's sake, man, here you are living in what can only be called sin with a, with a musical singer. Out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs>